Welcome to Tuesday of the 10th week of Ordinary Time. I'm glad to be with you once again today to pray with you and to share with you some thoughts about the Word of God. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And please pay attention to that first reading from Paul's second letter. So see if some of those things we talked about before begin to make certain sense for you. So let's ask God for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. You are the truth, Christ have mercy. And you are the life, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in your need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as God is faithful, our word to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was proclaimed to you by us, Silvanus and Timothy and me, was not yes and no, but yes has been in him. For however many are the promises of God, 
Their yes is in him. Therefore, the amen from us also goes through him to God for glory. But the one who gives us security with you in Christ and who anointed us is God. He has also put his seal upon us and given the spirit in our hearts as a first installment. The word of the Lord. Let your face shine, shine on us. Let your face shine, shine on us. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, gives understanding to the simple. Let your faith Turn to me in pity as you turn to those who love your name. Let your face Steady my footsteps according to your promise, and let no iniquity rule over me. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your steps. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all from all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So here in, uh, in this, I'm going to talk about this for at least today and tomorrow a little bit. N.T. Wright offers a very interesting image as we try to penetrate the gospel here today and the gospel here tomorrow. And he talks about um, a revolutionary party coming to power. And he says, it's really easy to sit around on the sidelines and to criticize and complain and think you can do it better. But whenever it comes time to you actually doing it better, could you really, really do that? So he goes on to say that if a revolutionary party ever really gets into power, they have to be able to do two things. Number one, prove that they can form a government that actually works 
and actually is effective in governing the people, number one, as opposed to just sitting around and complaining about what's going on with the previous government. And secondly, and maybe more importantly, stay committed to their ideals, not allow power to corrupt them in some way. So N.T. Wright takes this image of a revolutionary party and he takes it to Jesus as the great revolutionary that he is. And he goes on to say that Jesus needs to somehow do two things as well as the great revolutionary that he is. First of all, he has to show that everything that he's about is the fulfillment of all the longing of what Judaism, the fulfillment of all that Jews believe and long for, that he's the fulfillment of all that. And secondly, he has to be to prove he is doing something radically, profoundly new. Did Jesus pull that off? And so here we are talking about Jesus's, uh, um, um, uh, here we are in the Sermon on the Mount, of course, and he's, and he's, he's uh, telling them you're supposed to be light and you're supposed to be salt. Now, uh, he's God talking to Israel to be salt, and folks, they really weren't salt very much at all, but they seemed to be behaving just like everybody else, all the other nations around them, power politics, factions, squabbles, just like any other nation. They really weren't salt. Then God called the Jewish people to be the light of the world. Now, we all know the Jewish people were called to be the chosen people, which meant they were the people that were supposed to be the light that was going to invite all other people from everywhere to come and uh, to be part of Judaism so they also can be light. They, all, they, they could see the light in the people of Israel. They were supposed to be the great beacons of light so people can go and, 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 and find their way to God in Judaism as well. And as you know, they really weren't much light. As a matter of fact, they seem to be pretty much, as you read the Old Testament, as many of you have, pretty much people of the darkness, <laughs> pretty corrupt in many, many different ways. They didn't pull it off too well. And so here Jesus is talking to them 2,000 years ago. He's talking to us. Are we salt? Are we flavoring the world around us? Or are we just like everybody else with our squabbles, our factions, all the different things that we fight about in the church, our divisions? Are we, are we salt or have we lost our flavor? And then you and I, as believers in the church, are called to be light to a world that's living in darkness. But are we pretty much ourselves living in that very same darkness? Have we really begun to be the light? Jesus is challenging them. He's challenging us here today. The fulfillment of the law and the prophets was somehow or other for them and now for us. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, to be salt and to be light. Here's my questions for today. Is the church of today salt and light? Are you, am I, salt and light? Looking forward to seeing you once again tomorrow. And God bless you. Thank you for watching us here for our Tuesday Liturgy of the Word.